One of the most upvoted React questions on Stack Overflow is why set state is not reflecting change immediately. We all know this behavior. First console log will log the original value, then we call set state and console log again, but the value did not change. As React Docs explain, setting state only changes it for the next render. But does it have to be this way? We could theoretically imagine use sync state hook, where you define your state, you call the set state just the same, but when you want to access the current value, you can do it immediately. Well, I wrote this hook myself. It will have a bit different syntax, which I will explain in a minute, but it will work the same in principle, making state updates immediate. Just a heads up, this video is again in the spirit of questioning React's design, you should probably not use the hook that we'll write today in production, but if you like experiments and you want to learn something new about React, I promise it will be fun. But first, why set state is not synchronous? Actually, that's a wrongly stated question. You see, in JS we can divide all functions to sync or async. But set state is very weird. If its result is not immediate, we would expect it to be async, right? Well, async functions can be awaited, but surprisingly we actually can't place await before set state call. It's not returning any promise that can be awaited. So it's technically sync. And the proper question is then why the result of set state is not immediate. We need to be aware that state is not only a value store. If it were only about storing and getting back values, we could use regular JS variables. But React is all about re-rendering, which means every time some internal value slash state changes inside the component, it should detect this change and trigger re-render. Then the virtual DOM rebuilds, meaning every function component with all its code is executed again. Then the old and new virtual DOMs are diffed, and those computed changes are then pushed to the real DOM. And every time our function component is called again, all regular variables are reassigned from scratch. By the way, this is just how regular JavaScript works. When you call a function, it doesn't remember the previous values of the variables, because you are defining them from scratch. To be able to remember previous value in vanilla.js, we need to extract the particular variable outside of the function. And this is exactly the same thing that React does. State is just a variable that lives outside of our component. And because of that, it's not wiped out on every re-render. So setState function has two purposes. First, to update this external variable. Second, to actually signal to React that it needs to re-render. Renders in React are top-bottom, meaning when we re-render the parent component, we also re-render all the children of this component. This can be obviously expensive for bigger trees. And of course, there are a lot of optimization techniques to skip those unnecessary re-renders. We often discuss things like memo, use memo, use callback, and now React Compiler is coming into the picture. But one equally important and often forgotten internal mechanism is called batching. Batching means that if I call set state four times inside one of my event handlers, it will not trigger four separate re-renders. It will actually group all those set states together and re-render the component once. And to be able to batch those set states, we can't execute them immediately. React is actually putting them into the queue. And having this queue, it can first process all the rest of our code, then batch together our set state calls and execute them together within one re-render. So that's the primary reason why React is not executing set state immediately. Okay, seems logical. Case closed. Oh, you're still here? Okay. I will assume that you are not afraid what is in the rabbit hole. If set state consists of two separate actions, let's call them update state and trigger re-render, why we can't split those actions and only group the re-render calls? Then we could execute the updates one by one immediately when set state is called, while re-renders could still be postponed and executed together for the performance. This makes sense in theory, I hope you agree, but how was I able to implement it on my own? We actually won't even need to go into React's source code, we can do it using basic hooks that are already exposed by React. I bet you know there already is a way to update a value immediately while having it preserved between renders. That's the property of refs. 
But one thing that is missing in refs is that changing ref value doesn't trigger new render. So use state can help us to preserve state between renders and it triggers new render, while use ref also preserves state, but it makes the updates immediate. So why not try to combine them together? The brute force approach is to simply define both state and ref inside our theoretical use sync state hook, initialize both of them with the initial value param, and then create a custom setter function that will update both at the same time. We then expose this custom setter outside. We also need to expose the value, but we know that state is not immediately updated, so we expose ref. The problem with this implementation is that to access the most current value from ref, we have to use current property. And to be honest, I always felt it's just a bit awkward. Why we have to use current? Can't we just pass ref.current as a result of our hook? Well, we would end up with stale value, just like with state. You know, there are two ways to pass variables in JavaScript. By value and by reference. When we return ref.current from our hook, we are returning a value. And JavaScript is basically copying this value to our variable in the component. So every time we refer to this variable later in the code, we are simply looking into the copy that was made when we called our hook. Assigning new value to the ref will still update its value outside of the component, but it doesn't change the copy that we are referring to. On the other hand, when we return ref, we are returning an object, and objects are passed as reference. So the ref we assign at the top of our component is only an address to our object. And every time we write ref.current, we are actually saying, go to the original object and check the current value inside this attribute. So in the first example, we keep reading the same value that was copied once at the top, and in the second example, we are accessing the source objects attribute each time. So every time we are getting the most up-to-date value. By the way, this is how refs work internally. You can implement use ref using use state. We just wrap state into the object with the current property and return reference to this object from the hook. Then you don't modify it via set state because we know it's put into the queue, but by direct assignment. And you access it via this current property to always get the most up-to-date value. Knowing this, we can realize that we don't need both use state and use ref in our hook. We only need use state. We will do the same trick as with use ref implementation. We wrap our value into the object. We still have to do two operations for set function because we need to call set state to trigger re-render and we need to assign value to the object so it happens immediately. Then we return our object and JavaScript does this naturally by reference. But I said I don't like accessing value by current property. It's long, it's ugly, using state.current in our components will be pretty bad developer experience. Actually, prior to React's creation, we had a better pattern for accessing and setting encapsulated variables. The pattern that emerged more than 40 years ago with languages such as C++ and Java. It's actually pretty popular today in JavaScript when writing object-oriented codes. I mean, getters and setters. If you think about it, we already use setter in React. So why not use getter for state? It would be much more elegant and simply shorter than using artificial current property. So there it is. We return a getter function that will access the object's property for us. And now we can check it in practice. We log the initial value, then we call set state, then log the value accessing it via getter function, and we can see it's updated immediately. Of course, the internal implementation of this hook is not the most elegant but I purposely limited myself to write it on top of React's use state just to show you that making updates immediate is possible. This could be easily implemented in the React source code to polish all the rough edges. So why React team decided that set state is not causing immediate effects? Well, this is a topic for my next video and all I can say for now is the phrase internal consistency. So subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when the next video is out. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you next time.